Team Deathmatch, eliminate all Axis forces. Well guys, what an interesting few days it has been. The Call of Duty multiplayer beta dropped early on Thursday evening in the UK and it's just finished today. There's a second beta coming this weekend, starting on September the 1st, but the big question is, based on this beta, what do I think? Is this going to be a good Call of Duty and should you consider buying it? Let's take a few steps back and give you some context and background about where my opinions are coming from, so you can judge whether those opinions might line up with yours. I'm a middle-aged gamer who came back to the hobby only a few years ago. When we bought my son an Xbox One, he gave me his Xbox 360, which was the first console I'd had since the PlayStation 2. This was the boost jumping life cycle of Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. And after completing the campaign, I then ventured into multiplayer, playing against bots before finally going online and getting my butt kicked over and over again. Eventually, after much practicing, I was the top scorer in a winning team at Team Deathmatch. I worked my th way through the campaigns on other Call of Duty Xbox 360 games and played quite a bit online of Black Ops 1, Black Ops 2, although I was never particularly good at any of those. With the release of Call of Duty Black Ops 3, I bought the Xbox 360 version, which was multiplayer only, and had a blast playing that game, until in the February of 2016, I couldn't stand it any longer and bought a PlayStation 4 bundled with Black Ops 3. I then spent hundreds of hours playing that game in multiplayer, mostly team deathmatch and free for all. In 2016, I also picked up Battlefield 4 and started seriously putting time into that game. And once I'd got my head around the bigger maps, the vehicle gameplay and different mechanics, I'd say that probably around September time, I started spending more time in Battlefield 4 than Black Ops 3, but also because I'd played so much Black Ops 3, I'd get a bit sick of it. I was also really looking forward to the release of Infinite Warfare bundled with Modern Warfare Remastered and of course the upcoming Battlefield 1. As it turned out, Infinite Warfare was a pile of rubbish so I never bothered putting too much time into Modern Warfare Remastered because Battlefield 1 was simply so good. Honestly, over the last 10 months I've put over 350 hours into Battlefield 1 and I've got a score per minute of well over a thousand, a KD ratio of 1.15 and in Battlefield 1, with the right team, with the right enemies on the right map, I can be in the top three of a match. Needless to say, Battlefield 1 is my favourite multiplayer shooter by far, and it's the standard to which I judge all other shooters, in terms of graphics, sound, gunplay, gameplay, consistency, immersion maps, progression, and above all, fun. I was also ready to give up on Call of Duty until I heard they were setting this year's instalment in World War II, so I went ahead and pre-ordered the version with the season pass, but would I be disappointed again? Okay, so now you know where you're on coming from, here's more opinions on the Call of Duty World War II multiplayer beta weekend one. Call of Duty World War II multiplayer is going to be hard, real hard. The maps are small, the gameplay fast and the guns fast firing with a quick time to kill. This game is going to be much harder than Battlefield 1. In Battlefield 1 terms this is like fighting in the ballroom on ballroom blitz for a whole match. Or in the choke points in Operation Locker in Battlefield 4. I found this game harder than Black Ops 3 and Advanced Warfare. It's probably because I need much more practice on the maps and with the mechanics, but with these small maps and powerful submachine guns, you don't really have much time to think. My emotions changed through the beta as I came to terms with this. To start with, I was excited. The game looked great and sounded great, but I sure was dying a lot, but that initial excitement kept me enthusiastic. Then I started to worry that the game was a little broken. Surely I wasn't this bad. Surely I should be doing better by now. Maybe this was infinite warfare all over again in a World War II skin. Then Call of Duty World War II started to click. I started to understand the language of the game and how to express myself in its vocabulary. I adjusted my weapons classes to compete with submachine gun rushes. I concentrated very hard on centering, pre-aiming and thinking about the flow of the maps. 
I started to get better. I started to go positive. I then started to have big kill spreads. You know, the difference between my deaths and my kills. Sure, I wasn't the highest scorer, but I did make a big difference as to whether my team won or lost in team deathmatch. And I started to enjoy the game. I carried on learning the maps, being more aggressive, predicting where the enemy would be until I achieved what I thought would be too difficult during this beta. I was the top scorer in a match of team deathmatch in a winning team. I was the top dog in a game of Call of Duty World War II team deathmatch. I then started to really, really enjoy this game. Call of Duty World War II multiplayer will not be fun for casual gamers. I'll tell you now, it's just too fast and too chaotic. If you want that, just save your money and pick up something else. COD World War II multiplayer will be a fun game to play for people who haven't stopped playing Call of Duty because you'll still have those twitch muscles and that map awareness from Infinite Warfare. But if you're a lapsed Call of Duty player or a Battlefield player, Call of Duty World War II multiplayer will only be fun if you're willing to put in many hours practicing and grinding to get your aim and speed up to par and to learn the flow of the maps. So let's talk about some specifics. In this beta the SMGs were overpowered and need nerfing. The LMGs and assault rifles probably could do with a buff and the fixed position light machine guns are ridiculously powerful and need nerfing too. As does Full Metal Jacket, despite how much I loved using it to shoot enemies through walls. The maps are on the small side. Alden and Gibraltar are sort of fine, but Point to Hoc is a mess unless you're at the top of your game. If you get into a gunfight and don't kill the enemy, or even if you do, by the time you've reloaded, an enemy shoots you in the back. I definitely felt at times that the lag compensation dial was turned up too high and I was experiencing that dreaded shoot first die first experience of infinite warfare. But that wasn't that often and as I used an assault rifle more it seemed not to be a problem. The leveling system has been simplified as has weapon attachments which is all no bad thing so you're not constantly questioning yourself about whether it's your skill or your gun and class which are the fault for your poor performance. The game is full of submachine gun rushers who jump shot round corners and swan dive to your feet and a lot of the times it seems like a score chase and not a tactical shooter. But slow things down, check your minimap, try and coax your team into getting a little bit of map control and all of a sudden the game changes into an intense and very fun shootout. Think about the battles we've had around the sea flag on Suez in Battlefield 1, or the villages at A and B on Gorman Railway in Battlefield 4, or maybe inside the aquarium on Black Ops 3, or in the main street, the main drag in Fringe again on Black Ops 3. Technically it was a solid beta which bodes well for the release of the game, so well done Sledgehammer, everything worked. We had three multiplayer maps, three standard game modes and the excellent war mode with the Operation Breakout map. They extended the level cap halfway through so people could try out some more weapons and streams. Speaking of the war mode, that has been the icing on the cake of this beta. An objective game mode where you take headquarters, build bridges, blow up ammo dumps and escort tanks with plenty of battlefield moments of last second pushes, desperate defences and adrenaline packed finishes. To sum all this up, Call of Duty World War II multiplayer will only be fun for you if you're willing to put in the time to practice. You're going to have to build up those twitch reactions, you're going to have to know the flow of the maps and experiment with the best class setups for your playstyle. You're going to have to learn how to get map control on all the different maps and know the kill zones and safe areas on the war mode maps. Call of Duty World War II multiplayer is going to be a hard game. But if you put the effort in, if you become fluent in its vocabulary, if you learn when to express yourself eloquently and when to express yourself bluntly, we well then could have something very special on our hands indeed perhaps the best Call of Duty of this console generation. Okay, so that's enough from me. Put your questions and comments down below. What do you think about Call of Duty World War II? Did you play the beta? Are you looking forward to it? Are you going to buy it? Are you going to wait and see? Maybe wait for the next beta, see what they put in. Maybe they're going to put some campaign in. Maybe they're going to put some zombies in. Probably some more maps. 
If you enjoyed the video, hit like. If you want to see more of the same, subscribe. Thank you very, very much for your time, and I will see you again soon. Then we can invest.